with another read aloud today, and I am super excited about this one because it is Christmas time, obviously. And this book is a book that goes along with one of my favorite Christmas movies. I love the Christmas movie Miracle on 34th Street. I don't know if you've ever read that one before or watched that one before, but it's great. I love it. You should check it out. But it's a really old one, and this book is a storybook edition of that Christmas classic. So we are going to read Miracle on 34th Street, which is by Valentine Davies, pictures by James Newman Gray. This is adapted for picture book by Susanna Leonard Hill. Miracle on 34th Street. Floats stretched like a rainbow along Central Park West. Huge balloons tugged at their ropes as if to say, come on, let's go. Two buzz, oomp bud, and bass drum boomed as the marching band tuned up. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade was about to start. Look, mother, Susan exclaimed. She pointed to Santa's sleigh at the end of the line. Santa was snoring. Oh, no, said mother. The parade will start any minute, and Santa is the most important part. He's the grand finale. Mother was in charge of the whole Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. She spent much of the year getting everything ready so the parade would run just right. But now, moments before the start, Santa was sound asleep in the back of the sleigh. She needed to fix this before the grumpy Mr. Sawyer found out and complained to Mr. Macy. Excuse me, ma'am, said an elderly bearded gentleman. May I be of some help? Mother took one look at the man and smiled. He was small and round with a bushy white beard, rosy cheeks, and eyes that twinkled with merriment. He was perfect. Quick as a wink, he helped him. She helped him into, San, into a Santa costume and onto the float. What a wonderful Santa he is, Mother marveled. The best we've ever had. I'm going to invite him to dinner tonight to say thank you. That night, Mother and Susan, their kind neighbor Fred, and the old gentleman gathered around the table for Thanksgiving dinner. Susan couldn't help but ask, Who are you, sir? And how did you know to help my mother at just the right time? Well, I'm Kris Kringle, my dear, the old gentleman said with a wink. I knew to help because I am indeed Santa Claus. Susan crossed her arms. I don't believe in you. Mother says there's no such thing as Santa Claus or any of the other silly things children are told and make believe. Uh-oh. Santa Claus is at her table and she doesn't believe in him. What's going to happen? Chris looked surprised. N no Santa Claus? He asked. No make-believe? Surely you've read fairy tales or played house or zoo? Susan shrugged. No, that's not for me, she said. Mother doesn't believe in any of those things, so I don't either. Chris replied. But my dear, make-believe and pretending are what being a child is all about. It's about imagination. How would you like to make snowballs in the summertime? How would you like to visit the Statue of Liberty in the morning and in the afternoon fly south with a flock of geese? Susan thought it would be amazing to have such adventures. Come, said Chris. He led her to the living room. I'll teach you to pretend. In no time, Chris and Susan were a couple of monkeys swinging through the jungle. Susan had never had so much fun. What would you like for Christmas? Chris asked in between monkey noises. Nothing, Susan said. Come now, Chris smiled kindly. 
There must be something. Well, Susan hesitated. There is one thing. Her voice grew quiet. I wish we could have a little house in the country with a swing in the backyard. Me and my mother and, well, she glanced sideways to the dining room where mother laughed at Fred. A family. She whispered. She showed Chris a picture she'd saved. This house, she said, feeling silly. That's a tall order, young lady, Chris said. If you can't do it, Susan said, I'm, I'll know you're not really Santa. Just a nice old man with a white beard, like Mother says. I'll do my best, Chris promised. But just because every child can't get her wish doesn't mean there's no Santa Claus. Sometimes children wish for things that aren't right for them. Just as I'll try, I want you to try to believe Santa is real. That's really important. Let's listen to it again. This is so important to know right there. I'll do my best, Chris promised. But just because every child can't get her wish doesn't mean there's no Santa Claus. Sometimes children wish for things that aren't right for them. Just as I'll try, I want you to try to believe Santa is real. That's super important for all of us to remember. Just because we don't get what we want doesn't believe that Santa didn't hear us and that Santa's not there. It just means that it may not be the right thing for us right now. Something else may have been something we needed a little bit more. Susan smiled. Just then, Mother and Fred joined them. You did such a good job today, said Mother to Chris. Mr. Macy would be thrilled if you'd stay on to work as Santa Claus, Santa until Christmas. I've got room ne a room next door if you need a place to stay, offered Fred. I'd love to have the real Santa Claus stay with me, he said as he winked at Susan. Don't make silly statements like that to her, Fred, whispered Mother. Have some faith, Fred replied. You've just got too much common sense. Faith is believing in things when common sense tells you not to. Chris beamed. Looks like it's all settled then, he said. I thank you for your kindness. As the days went by, Susan watched Chris play Santa Claus at the store. She saw him make... Every, every child feels special and believe that his or her Christmas wish would come true. Susan heard him talk to the children in different languages when they didn't speak English. He even signed to a child who was deaf. Their faces lit up with delight at being understood. That's pretty awesome. How can he know how to speak to everyone? Susan asked her mother. He was truly jolly and kind. Susan knew his beard was real. She had tugged it on, tugged on it herself. He must be Santa. Darling, that doesn't make him Santa Claus, Mother said. I speak French, but that doesn't make me French toast. But even Mother was beginning to wonder. What do you think? Is Chris Kringle really Santa? Chris was so cheerful and kind. He was the very spirit of Christmas. But as much as most people loved Chris, not everyone was happy with him. Grumpy Mr. Sawyer did not like having Chris around. Mr. Sawyer thought Chris made everyone else at Macy's look bad by comparison. Mr. Sawyer was determined to get rid of Chris. A few days before Christmas, when Mr. Macy was jam-packed, and when Macy's was jam-packed, and the lines were... At their longest, Mr. Sawyer pointed at Chris and announced to the crowd, This man thinks he's really Santa Claus. I, I am, said Chris. See? Mr. Sawyer sneered. Mother saw that people were worried. They were murmuring that anyone who believed himself to be Santa Claus must not be thinking clearly and probably shouldn't be working. Per perhaps it it's best if you go, Mother said, sadly. Is that very nice of Mr. Sawyer? Mm -mm. Probably wouldn't do that to Santa Claus.
Goodbye, Mr. Sawyer said triumphantly. Have a nice trip back to the North Pole. Chris left Macy sadly. Why did no one believe? Fred, Susan, and Mother followed Chris outside. You can't let them treat you this way, said Fred. We must go to court. I'll represent you and prove that you indeed are Santa. If we win, everyone will know you're the real Santa. But if we lose, Fred continued, you will lose more than your job. You may ruin your good name, and children will stop believing in you. Chris was nervous, but he believed in Fred. He hoped everything would be okay. Susan was nervous, too. She liked Chris and didn't want anyone to make fun of him or cause him trouble. The following week in court, Fred called his first witness. It was the prosecutor's son. Do you believe Santa is real? Fred asked the boy. Yes, said the boy. My daddy told me Santa is real, and he would never tell me something that isn't so, would you, daddy? The boy looked right at his father. Of course Santa is real, cried the prosecutor, Mr. Mara. He did not want his son to think he told lies. Fred patted Chris on the back. Mr. Mara had just admitted that Santa Claus was real. He won. We won, he whispered. Once the young boy left the courtroom, Mr. Mara said, But there is no proof that this, this man is Santa Claus. He's right, said the judge, looking at Fred. The state of New York is willing to agree that Santa is real, but that doesn't make Mr. Kringle him. Fred glanced worriedly at Chris. How on earth could he prove that Chris was the one and only Santa? You have until tomorrow, announced the judge. We'll look forward to seeing your proof. The next morning, everyone arrived at the courthouse. Mother and Susan were sitting in the courtroom to su show support for Fred and Chris, hoping for a miracle that would help them vote. The judge entered the courtroom and began the trial. He asked Fred, well, where's your proof? Fred was quiet. He didn't have any proof. He was up all night and could not think of an answer to his to this problem just then one of the courtroom doormen came forward and whispered in fred's ear fred's eyes widened then he smiled he gestured towards the door and called out bring them in your honor fred said to the judge here is our proof one postal worker after another paraded into the courtroom loaded down with bags of mail. What do you think are in those bags? They emptied each bag on the judge's desk until it was covered in letters. Every single one was addressed to Santa. The postman had read about the case in the papers and realized it was much faster to reach Santa in New York than send the letters to the North Pole. The United States Post Office is an official government agency, said Fred. It's against the law for them to deliver mail to the wrong person. If they say Chris is Santa, he is. In the face of such overwhelming love and support, no further proof was needed. Case closed, said the judge. Merry Christmas, everyone. All of those letters to Santa Claus. And all in different things. So call them Santa Claus, Saint Nick at the North Pole, Père Noël. Puppy Noel, all those different names that Santa Claus is called all over the world. All of those names were delivered to Chris Kringle. He has to be the real Santa. Chris had a celebration on Christmas Day and invited Susan, Mother, and Fred to come over for fun and presents. Susan looked and looked, but she did not find her Christmas wish under the tree. How did they prove that Chris was really Santa? Mother tried to reassure Susan by saying, just because things didn't turn out the way you wanted, you still have to believe in people. That's another really important line. Just because things didn't turn out the way you wanted, you still have to believe in people. As Mother Fred and Susan were driving home after the celebration, Susan wanted to be happy. The judge had said Chris was the real Santa, 
But if that was so, why hadn't she gotten her Christmas wish? Susan wanted to trust what Mother had said. She began to whisper, I believe, over and over. Just then, she saw the house of her dreams, the exact one she had shown Chris. Stop, she cried. Stop the car. The moment the car pulled to a stop, Susan raced into the house with Mother and Fred on her heels. Her bedroom was just as she imagined, and the backyard, and the tree, and even the swing. Susan turned and saw Mother and Fred's arm around her. Every part of her wish was coming true. He really is Santa, she said, eyes shining. He really is. Look, there's his cane. He left right there. The end. How'd you like that? The state of New York said that Kris Kringle was really Santa. That's awesome. And Susan got her wish, which was so, so awesome at the end. I hope you loved that story. And the movie is also really great. So I recommend it if you haven't seen it. So I hope you have a Merry Christmas. I love you all.